the planking on the hull is now all complete um, and we're now going to order some Caribbean mahogany for the scratch built model. The kit has supplied two 4x4s which it wants me to laminate onto the model to make up the keel. Instead I've decided to use a solid piece from my stock uh, to make this part. And I'm using some juniper locally available um, to make up the stern post, the stem, the rudder and the the keel itself. Out to the outside shop we went, cut the various pieces out, cleaned them up and then fitted them to the model to make sure that everything fit perfectly and then glued and pinned the stem to the model and from then we then tried to bend the keel into place a um, lot of heat, a lot of water and that didn't quite work out as well as we hoped um, remember this is a very hard piece of, of timber so in hindsight perhaps I should have used um, a less dense piece of wood. When we took the um, clamps off we realized there was still a little spring left in it but not that much that it would give us problems. So we decided to go ahead and stick. Um, we used a combination of dark tight bond and some CA in critical points. We had five pins and we felt that that was enough to hold the keel in place. You're going to find that you're going to end up using all of the tools in your arsenal while shaping the, the uh, hull. Um, on another note, it is also very important that you pre-drill all the parts, preferably on a drill press, so that you get a nice clean um, hole to help in the installation of the part. The last piece we put on was the false keel and this went on pretty easily again using pre-drilled strips and just drilling the hole into the keel itself. We've got the false keel in, the stern post, the stem that completes the planking exercise on this model. Every now and again I get a reminder of why I do these videos and it's because when you get instructions and you get plans and it looks so crystal clear what you need to do and then you realize it's totally foggy. <laughs> then you go on the internet and you look at a series of models or perhaps if you're lucky some old paintings and you find out that what you think is crystal clear in a model is in fact not so clear at all. And the stern of this ship is one of those issues. Some of the models show the bulwark coming right to the edge and following the line of the stern. Others show a space and leaves a little space inside. And in fact, if you look at some of the paintings, which is probably the best um, idea of how the rail boat was made, you will see they almost all have a little space in the back here. And that means the piece of wood that is on the, on the stern um, is unpainted. It's actually in a natural color varnish of some sort and exposed. And on the inside, it's white. This is the drawing taken off the plan, but it's not dimensioned. And there's, it's very vague as to how you create this lip, uh, even left so on the profile. This model. Well, there are two shots of it. Again, doesn't show any great depth. Um, it's only when you start to get into the paintings that you truly get an appreciation, um, particularly this last one, which shows a wooden edge right around the stern. So I made up this little jig, um, which I'm going to bend the bulwark against. And I've already done one, so I'll just show you how that's done. You line it up exactly where it says using the step of the two decks. Um, I heated the piece and then used the dryer to bend it. 
and use simple clamps to hold them in place while the bend was setting. Perhaps my bending skills are not as good as I thought they were because whereas the starboard side bent perfectly, the port side um, did not cooperate as much and um, I may have to remake the piece. And this is what we think the stern is supposed to look like. The clips are simply there just to hold it in place. This is the jig for the stern piece which we have heated with the dryer. Once you take it off it holds its shape perfectly and um, we can fit it on the model. There we go, and it starts looking like that painting. It gives you a nice clean line on the on the stern. We're starting to correct some of the mistakes, um, certainly the obvious ones. And when we were doing the deck plan planking. I didn't see that there was a plank that went from side to side right at the lip of the of the two decks. So we drew a line and we replaced it and put it in and so we're just cleaning it up now. As one of the criticisms of the instruction um, you will know that there are times when you need to pre-paint a part before you install it simply because it's impossible to get a nice clean line either between a painted part and a varnished part or, a, or two different color painted parts and this is one of the times so we need to pre-paint certainly the stern of the bulwark which butts against a varnished piece at the stern Remember, you cannot paint over two pieces of wood where they're going to stick together. So you put the part on the model, draw a line that the paint shouldn't go below. And then you can go just a little bit below that, but leave enough wood um, that the glue can stick on two wooden surfaces. Most of the time I've used acrylic paints on my models, but this time we're going to be trying some polyurethane from Minibox. This is a classic satin black. Um, we've put two coats on already and we, the final third coat will be put at the end when most of the model is assembled. This is the classic line. This is the varnish piece and the painted bulwark. And it just would be impossible to paint that line um, without getting paint on the, the stern piece. And now we are going to start putting the glue onto the prepainted strip. Um, I, I tend to use a, a very pointy glue applicator so that I get a minimum amount of glue exactly where I want it. Um, being very, very careful, um, particularly when you're going to clamp it up, that you don't get glue all over the place on other parts of the model where you, you really don't want the glue. Sometimes it's necessary to push the strip down. Um, that little space that you see between the deck boards and the bulwark uh, is not a problem because you have a molding strip that's going to fit um, there and it's not going to cause you any, any problem. You'll notice that I have marked out where the stanchions go on the bulwark. And the reason for that is that we want to make sure that when we make the two wooden surfaces, there's no paint. And I plan to pre-paint the white surface here, and leaving out this space wherever a stanchion is going. We've wet the moldings, and we're not going to apply heat. We're simply going to let them dry in place, which should allow them to maintain the shape of the hull. 
we've painted the the side of the mouldings as they relate to the deck again showing the importance of pre-painting parts there's simply no way to properly paint this line with the moulding in place. These three photographs help me establish where the colour on the moulding starts and stops. At the end of the day you have to make an educated decision as to where those lines are drawn. We just take it out now and see how well it's held the shape and that's pretty good. So now we'll just cut the um, uprights, the stanchions on the table saw. We've made up a 14 millimeter spacer to allow each stanchion to be put in exactly the correct position. Now we're going to repeat the same exercise and go to the front section and literally, literally do the same thing that we did here. Um, but you can see that we're going to have some challenges here um, as the pieces fit right up into the corner. And of course we have the bowsprit to fit here. The parts supplied in the kit were some round dowels. We've decided we're going to do it the correct way. We're going to go from a square to a round section. So we've cut out an 8 by 8 millimeter square section which we're going to put on a lathe and make the section as described in the drawings. Again my disappointment in the written instruction as not enough detail is given on how this bow spread is to be made up um, and it really makes you do a lot of research if you want to make sure that you that you get it right and I hope that I did that in this case and now we're going to try and fit it uh, through the bulwark and already I see lots of shaving and adjustment will have to be made to get it to fit in that very tight space I promise to try and make these videos a little shorter because I know they can be quite boring so I'm going to bring it to an end. Um, in the next video we'll go with the installation of the moulding strips, the stanchions and the bow, bow spread.